Well, it finally happened. We finally know what Jensen Huang has been cooking up for us, and it is exorbitant pricing. Yes, the new RTX 4000 graphics cards are going to be expensive, but we all knew that. What's more interesting is what Nvidia hasn't shown in that big presentation they did a couple of days ago. The RTX 4080, the most standard of SKUs, is getting a bit, well, less standard, and it's going to be shipping with two different variants right out of the box, a 16 gig and a 12 gig. Now that in itself wouldn't be a problem, we had these kind of products before, the problem is that the two cards are very, very different with completely different specs. In fact, the 12 gig variant even has less CUDA cores than the 3080. Though probably the worst offender is the fact that the slower 12 gigabyte card only has a 192-bit bus, something that, as Reddit has pointed out here, has always been exclusive to just the 60-tier cards. Despite all of that, through the power of the major architectural changes that includes massive improvements to the CUDA, RT, and Tensor cores, you'll be getting a lot of extra performance compared to the 3080. Well, at least kind of because the brand new DLSS 3.0 is doing a lot of the work in these NVIDIA graphs. Yes, DLSS is getting another upgrade, and it's about time, seeing how FSR 2.0 just took its crown, and Intel's XCSS, well, it's on the horizon, I guess. That's pretty much all that can be said about it. And this brand new version of DLSS promises huge improvements in performance by simply being able to generate new frames based on the information that the GPU already has about the scene. Now, while that does sound awesome, and the other AI improvements in this brand new version of DLSS will probably result in a higher overall performance, it also kind of sounds like some kind of like image smoothing technology. So we'll have to wait and see exactly how much of this is going to be, you know, actually more performance and how much is going to just be more fake frames. At least the RTX 4090 is looking more promising, seeing how that thing has just shy of 600 CUDA cores more than the previous gen 3090 and 3090 Ti. Not only that, but the 4090 finally breaks the 2 GHz barrier and does so in style with a factory boost clock of 2.5 GHz. And despite running the exact same memory configuration as the RTX 3090 and 3090 Ti, it is able to completely decimate those graphics cards in terms of performance. And also in terms of price, seeing how the RTX 3090 is going to cost you $1,600. I mean, what kind of fool is actually going to spend that much on a graphics card? Me. I'm that fool. I'm actually getting one. So that's pretty much everything that NVIDIA covered in the presentation. But there is so much more that, for better or worse, NVIDIA haven't mentioned. For starters, AV1 support. Yeah, that sound you just heard, that's the Intel Arc guys banging their heads on the tables because pretty much the only advantage the cards had is no longer an advantage. So that's one pretty cool feature that Nvidia haven't mentioned, but there's a lot of less cool features. For example, surprisingly, there is no PC Gen 5 support, which means you're still stuck in a PC Gen 4 interface, despite PC Gen 5 motherboards finally becoming a thing with the new generation of AMD and Intel boards that are coming out very soon. That's a pretty weird omission, and unless AMD or Intel surprises here, your fancy PC Gen 5 slot on your upcoming motherboard is kind of going to go to waste, or at least in this generation. Nvidia have also missed out on DisplayPort 2.0, which means that this card only supports DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.1, though the latter should still provide pretty much all the bandwidth you can need for most modern displays. And then there's the big one. Look carefully at these graphics cards. Do you see something that's uh, missing? Something that's supposed to be there? Something that's been there for literally like 20 years? That's right, SLI is officially dead because none of the cards, not even the 4090, have support for SLI or NVLink. So let's take a moment of silence to honor our fallen comrade that we all love so, so much in a world of PC hardware. Okay, moment over. So clearly there's so much more to these graphics cards than what was shown in the presentation. A lot of it is good, I mean AV1 support, why didn't they mention that, I have no idea, but other stuff is, well, more weird and kind of concerning, especially for the prices that they're charging for these GPUs. But whatever, people who still buy these things in droves and companies like ASUS and Gigabyte have already started teasing their designs for these graphics cards. Some of them look good. Some of them, uh, less so. So let me know exactly which specific models and which companies I should be doing overviews of in the near future, seeing how these cards are launching pretty soon actually, with the RTX 2090 dropping in October, 
and for the 80s dropping in November. So let me know what you think of all of this down in the comments below and if you want to help support this channel so we can make some pretty awesome reviews of these graphics cards in the near future then definitely check out our Patreon down in the video description below. I'd also like to thank my extinct Patreons Gavin Burns, Ryan, Justin Rage, Elevroniak, LKB, Bardrich Velker, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby and Jesse Herbman. Thank you guys so so much support truly goes a long way. Down there you can find our merch store where you can get awesome designs like this one and there's also our Discord server and social media links as well. But anyway, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.